the Chase Aerospace Gaming Channel. All right, PAX East 2015 for Star Citizen went much better than PAX East 2014 for Star Citizen. Uh, so let's get right into all the juicy information that was unveiled. Awesome. If you recall a previous video, I reported on a member of the Star Citizen community who started a petition to get multiplayer free flight mode put into Arena Commander. Well, we have it now, and it'll be released in the next update of the game, version 1.1. Why? Because you guys wanted it. Way to go, petition guy. Way to go. With version 1.1 comes change to the gimbal mount system. So uh, gimbal mounts accept guns that are one size smaller than the mount. That means that if you have a tier 4, uh, weapon mount port on your ship uh, you can attach a tier 4 gimbal and then that gimbal will only accept tier 3 weapons or smaller P maybe smaller I don't know about the smaller thing but it'll only accept uh, at maximum tier 3 weapons so this is uh, all in an attempt to make gimbaled weapons less overpowered since they can they're really precise, especially in the hands of someone using a mouse. Uh, okay, moving on. Awesome. Arena Commander Bucks are here with version 1.1 and also a place to spend them on the Electronic Access Storefront or the EA Storefront. Now, this is clearly a jab at the real-life EA game, uh, game developer. Um, or are they a publishing company? Who knows? They suck. <laughs> uh, no one really likes EA. If you do, I apologize, slash, not really. Um, but whatever you feel about the real-life EA, this in-fiction EA is um, where you will go to spend your Arena Commander bucks, which you will earn by playing Arena Commander. Uh, and you won't have to spend any more uh, real-life money on the game to try out uh, ships or weapons unless you just really want to back the game uh, which is an admirable endeavor and I encourage anyone who wants to do that to do that but for those of you who have spent your money and you're done this is for you you just go play arena commander earn arena commander bucks and spend to your little hearts content to try out new ships and weapons and you can do that at your at the EA store So as you're well aware, uh, ships in Star Citizen are very, very detailed. So you can imagine that writing out all of the damage states, uh, you know, 25, 50, 75, 100%, uh, would take up a lot of space. And you'd be correct, because it did take up a whole lot of space. So to fix this problem, uh, the devs came up with a procedural damage system. And... Um, it's actually a huge improvement because uh, not only uh, is it much more precise from what I've seen, and I'll show you here in a second, I've got that clip, but uh, they're able to take a lot of um, information into account, like uh, deformation, thickness, temperature, and burn. And then you can do a lot of cool procedurally placed animations for uh, damage markings, and then you can procedurally fragment the ship which is really cool and I'll show you that right now. So as you can see the physical deformation of the ship is occurring pretty much along the lines that the operator of this turret is uh, shooting into the surface of the ship. And uh, if you'll notice all the particle effects and uh, visual representations of damage are being shown exactly where these uh, beams of energy uh, slash bullets are hitting the surface of the ship. Also, notice how each bullet is um, exerting force and moving the ship 
uh, when there's an absence of gravity. Uh, I'm not totally sure if that's always been the case. It might have always been that way. If so, I apologize, but it's still cool, so I'm going to talk about it anyways. And in this last example here, you'll see um, the visual representation uh, is kind of permanently represented. Uh, none of that's disappearing uh, just because you're causing more damage to the ship. That is permanent visual uh, representation for the damage state that the ship is in, which is awesome. And also really sad if you are the pilot, because that is hideous. Also, Chris made it very clear that it is possible to write your name in the ship of your enemy as the ultimate teabag. And you'll all be pleased to hear that the Retaliator has been revamped, and there's a new, uh, it's not really a commercial, it's more of just a show-off video of the Retaliator after its, uh, kind of redesign process. Uh, it is the new standard for multi-crew ships, and, uh, it is hangar ready. So, go check out this full video on the, um, Star Citizen YouTube page or on the website and uh, get ready to have a lot of fun in the ship. And now it's time to talk about the animation updates that are coming with uh, 1.1 and also with the FPS module which would be 1.1.1. <laughs> so um, first up is they actually had real military experts come in and tell them you know uh, what it should look like when you're reloading a gun, how soldiers would actually handle a gun, and uh, so the results are pretty nice, pretty impressive. Um, it looks much cleaner, um, much more realistic. Also, uh, after all of the mocap that they've been doing, they've got um, really smooth, clean, realistic animations for um, walking around uh, with weapons, and as you can see from the comparison videos here, um, just the gun position looks way better instead of it being all the way down at the bottom of the screen. I was a little bit concerned about that. I couldn't quite put my finger on what was wrong with it though. Something was bothering me and it turns out it was the gun position. It was way too low. Um, and also they have, like I, like I just said, uh, they fixed the um, stupid, <laughs> stupid stiff running animation. Looks a lot better now, um, so thank goodness for that. And then uh, they show off this this cool little. Um, it's I guess it's just showing off like the fidelity of their animations and like uh, their muscle system. It really doesn't mean anything to us uh, unless you're in the the animation skeleton uh, line of work, but it's still kind of cool to look at. And as you can see, there's a lot of updates coming to the animation system looking ahead, such as starts, stops, directional jukes, a cover system, um, ragdoll, apparently, uh, some crouch movements, and uh, marines will employ an off-aim lowered position when moving through territory and not firing. So very interesting stuff. And speaking of combat, this new company, Interdimension Software, has created this game, Star Marine, which is the um, lore way of saying the FPS module. So uh, you're basically looking at the cover art for the uh, in-fiction uh, FPS module. So this is what your character will be playing while you are playing the FPS module. I'm not really sure if there's a clear, concise way to say any of that because it's kind of confusing. It's like Gameception. I made an entire video dedicated to this. Please go watch it. it I, I had a lot of fun uh, butchering an explanation for that one. So moving on. And here are some armors that were shown off at PAX East. Um, some of them are UEE, some of them are Outlaw. Uh, you can pause it if you'd like. Uh, the last two were Light Armors. This is uh, UEE Medium. Moving on to Outlaw Medium. Um, my favorite is actually the UEE Heavy. It just looks robust, right? Look at that. 
And then you've got the outlaw heavy armor looks like a fat robot. And now we've got the weapons. Um, I don't know too much about the weapons, but you can see all of its information listed on the left hand side, all the way from the type of ammo it uses to its effective range. So this is all really interesting stuff. I believe this is the first time we've actually gotten any information on the uh, energy shotgun, so that's pretty cool. So we're just going to soak this all in for a second, just just relish in the moment. Awesome. And uh, we also have some information on the grenade types. Uh, of course we have frag and the EMP grenade, but we also have something called a propulsion grenade, which uh, Chris says it just kind of knocks everyone back. It's like a disperser, like crowd control, if you want to look at it that way. And we also have a few gadgets, which I will let Chris tell you about himself. There's uh, various different uh, items to use, like a personal med kit to fix yourself up, personal sheet, a hologram, which will dupe who you are, and a sort of, well, aerodynamics. And uh, next up, we have the two maps that will drop with the FPS module. So first up, we've got uh, what they're calling traditional combat on Gold Horizon Platform, which is a space station, and it, uh, uh, from what we've seen in the other FPS demo, it's got the capability to have zero-g combat, but it also has the capability of having um, combat in uh, a gravitational field. Uh, it'll be 8v8, uh, UEE versus Outlaws, and uh, that's <laughs> that's why the uh, the armor had a set for uh, light. It had light, medium, and heavy for both UEE and Outlaw. The terrain will be uh, damageable, if that's a good word for it. You'll be able to uh, shoot out lights, and uh, and uh, you can even, as as we've seen, interact with the gravity field generator. So uh, stuff like that will become prevalent in uh, the Star Citizen first-person shooter aspect of the game. Uh, moving on to the Ender's Game arena, uh, also called the Zero-G Sports Arena, uh, you'll be able to play entire games in Zero-G, and they also uh, show off this cool little uh, Zero... I'm sorry. They also show off this cool little pistol grappling hook thing. It's like it's, it's really just a tractor beam, um, and they've detailed it here in this picture. Um, but that's what they use to get around. And for the sake of brevity, and I hate to do this to you guys, uh, I'm not going to include um, all of the gameplay. Um, here's a little snippet of it. Just click here, or click on the annotation, or whatever I put up here to go to the uh, video that I'll put up, which is just uh, the snippet from the presentation that is the um, Zero-G Arena demo. And that will bring this video to a close. So uh, looking forward, in the next few months we have the first person shooter module and the social module coming out. And if you recall, the social module will be when you can invite a friend into your hangar and go and explore the uh, Stanton Arc Court landing zone, or Arc Core uh, landing zone. Then, uh, sometime in the middle of this year, we'll get Arena Commander 2.0, which is multi crew, and I absolutely cannot wait for that. I I'm so excited for that. You don't even know. You don't even know, bro. <laughs> so, uh, I'm excited for that one, obviously. And uh, towards the end of this year, we will get the first episode of Squadron 42, uh, which is actually, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to be calling that a completed finished product, so that'll be the first like totally done uh, piece of game that we're going to get. So it'll be the first uh, installment of the story, so that's really exciting. And that'll happen at, at the end of this year if everything uh, sticks to schedule, which it rarely does. And then we'll get the pre-alpha persistent universe, and that's like that's like the birth of this game right there. That's what everyone's waiting for. Can't wait. So uh, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it or thought it was um, helpful, 
or you learned something new, click that subscribe button for more awesome videos. And then click the like button to uh, actually communicate that you liked it. Because liking something without clicking the like button is just not really liking it. So, uh, thanks for watching. See you in the verse. Bye. Me.